calendar for the day. The first bill on the calendar for the day is House File 164. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 164, number one on the calendar for the day, an act relating to energy, the first engrossment. I call on the member from Anoka, Representative Stevenson, to explain your bill. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. House File 164, the Energy Conservation and Optimization Act, or ECO, it modernizes and expands Minnesota's highly successful conservation improvement program, also known as SIP. SIP is one of the nation's leading energy conservation programs. To date, the program has saved enough energy to power 100,000 homes annually. It has provided $6 billion in net benefits and supports 45,000 local jobs in every corner of the state. But SIP has not been significantly updated since 2007, and the energy landscape in our state has changed significantly in that time. This is a big bill, but at a high level, the bill first expands SIP to allow for energy savings that can be realized through load management and fuel switching. Second, it completes the transition from a program based on energy conservation spending to one based on actual energy savings. Third, the bill increases, excuse me, the conservation goal for our investor-owned utilities. Fourth, it doubles the support available to low-income customers of investor-owned utilities. And finally, it provides regulatory flexibility to our co-ops and munis. The really significant aspect of this bill is the incredible coalition that supports it. It has the support of all of Minnesota's investor-owned utilities, Excel Energy, Minnesota Power, and Otter Tail Power, as well as all of our co-ops, munis, and GNTs, every single electric utility in the state supports this bill. It's also supported by the state's largest natural gas utility, Center Point Energy. It's supported by the clean energy community. It has the support of consumer advocacy groups, such as the Citizens Utility Board. It has the support of labor unions, such as IBEW Local 292. And it has the support of business groups, such as the Minnesota Mechanical Contractors Association and the National Electrical Contractors Association, as well as some of the leading members of our corporate community. Incredibly, I have not listed, or really even begun to list, every single organization that supports this bill. While this coalition is huge, it's true that not everyone supports this bill, and I'm always trying to listen to those who aren't supportive and trying to address their concerns. I know that one group in particular has expressed some concerns is the propane industry. I've heard propane argue that the fuel switching provision in the bill will harm them. They claim that fuel switching is uh, bad for Minnesota because according to them, propane is cheaper and cleaner than Minnesota's electrical supply. Well, I have some great news for the propane industry. This bill is fuel neutral. It doesn't prefer one fuel over another. Fuel switching is only allowed if the switch saves money and decreases emissions. If propane is cheaper and cleaner, it won't be eligible for switching under this bill. In addition to the broad coalition of stakeholders supporting the bill, there's a broad collection of legislators working on it as well. Representative Eklund has been a great partner on this bill, and I thank him for his efforts, as has Representative uh, Garofalo, who has offered great advice and support here in the House. And I'm also uh, pleased to be working with Senator Rarick in the Senate on this bill. Now, when you get a bill that's the product of negotiations between that many stakeholders, it's going to be the case that no one is completely satisfied with the bill, and that's the nature of compromise. If I was going to write a SIP reform bill, one that changed the program only in ways that I like, it would look different than the bill before you. The same would be true if Representative Eklund drafted a bill that was entirely the way he wanted, and Representative Garofalo from his perspective, or Senator Rarick from his. But we've all come to the conclusion that we're not going to make the perfect the enemy of the good, especially since our definition of perfect is different. So members, I'm asking for your support for this compromise measure. Energy conservation saves money and creates jobs. It's that simple, and I'm happy to answer questions. There is an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. <clears throat> Swazinski moves to amend House Bill number 164, the first engrossment. The amendment is coded A6. The member from Lyon, Representative Swazinski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I think these mics haven't been used enough in this room. Uh, they're a little tough to get out of the 
I move the A6 amendment. Uh, members, um, the A6 amendment is pretty straightforward. Um, it deletes the increase in the state energy conservation goal from 1.5 to 2.5. Uh, you know, it was talked a lot about that uh, Representative Cedison is listening to the, the, the concerns about this bill, and the Minnesota Chamber is against this bill. The, the Minnesota propane retailers is against this bill. And when you talk to business owners across the state, um, these changes aren't necessarily free. It sounds like, oh, these are going to lower the cost. These are going to do all these different things. But at the end of the day, mandates cost money. Goals become mandates, and mandates become goals. And it's, it's estimated uh, that you know, millions upon millions of dollars have been spent in this program. And those dollars don't come out of thin air. It comes out of someone's bottom line. It comes out of a food manufacturer's bottom line. It comes out of an egg processor's bottom line. But it doesn't come out of other sectors of our bottom line. We've conveniently stripped out, which I support, and I would actually support an expansion of the exemption of this bill. Um, to those high energy users across the state. Well, there's a lot of high energy users across the state. And I think it's premature to advance this bill as it moves forward. Um, the companion to this bill um, has made some changes. Um, when this bill last came before us, it was talked about that this bill couldn't, it was a fine piece of legislation that couldn't be messed with. Well. It's been improved, and it's improved the companion bill. Uh, deletes this section. I think this would put the bill in closer contact with that and uh, help the process of uh, the conference committee as it moves forward. And I would support, ask for your support on making it 1.5, or stripping out the 2.5 to 1.5 and ask for a roll call. Representative Swidzinski requests a roll call. Do I see 15 hands? There are 15 members in the chamber, so I do see 15 hands. There will be a roll call. The member from Anoka, Representative Stevenson. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I would ask members to oppose uh, this uh, amendment. Uh, this provision is an important part of the bargain reached between the various stakeholders on the bill, and I want to speak just a second to that and say uh, that, you know, um, this bill was carefully negotiated by a lot of stakeholders with a lot of diverse viewpoints. And one of the things that I have been really consistent, Representative Swazinski even mentioned from, from last year, is saying, unless there's broad buy-in from the coalition, I won't support an amendment to the bill. And I have said that not just to my friends on the Republican side of the aisle, but I have said that to my friends uh, to my left. I've said that to green groups and other groups that wanted changes. I've said, if you don't have the buy-in of the whole coalition, I'm not going to support the amendment. And that will be my consistent position. Uh, it was last year. It will be again uh, this year. Uh, it's not the case that we never make changes uh, to the bill. We did uh, indicate that we would accept an amendment for, uh, offered uh, by Representative Bo, who unfortunately couldn't offer it. Uh, but uh, we would accept uh, that. But I am asking for a no vote today. Discussion to the Swazinski Amendment. The member from Wright, Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. So I'm a little bit confused, Representative Stevenson, because um, in fact, the other body did adopt this change. And I know for firsthand and for certain that the other body's author of this bill you said Senator Rarick has been working very, very hard and has been achieving compromise, and yet this is in that version, and I'm really confused as to why you wouldn't adopt that here to show solidarity with that version in the Senate. Um, I could tell you this, that if you were willing to accept this amendment, I might actually vote for your bill. So I'd ask you to reconsider your advice to your members and if you would allow them to vote yes and put this on the bill, then you might have my vote. Thank you. Further discussion to the Swidzinski Amendment. Representative Swidzinski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, members. And just a reminder to folks, uh, we've heard a lot about energy prices and its increase. And just kind of a rule of thumb when it talks about energy production, for every 1% of 
for every uh, five, per, or what's my numbers here? For every uh, 1% of decrease in volume, so if we decrease the amount of electricity sold by 1%, it's estimated that we're gonna have to increase cost up to 5%. So it does cost money, and it's oftentimes more than what you actually receive out of it when it comes as a percentage of cost per reduction. And, and members, you know, you know, we've got a lot of work to do here before the end of session. And, you know, I think this potentially makes our job a little bit easier in the final weeks before the end of a session by putting this amendment on. And, you know, we talked about broad partisan, you know, broad coalition support. Well, a coalition is only built if you're invited in the room. And there are large swaths, a large swath of business owners, uh, those mom and pop shops, those protein folks uh, that had not been invited into this room. And uh, that's our job today is to re represent those folks as well too. So I ask for a green vote, thank you. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the A6 amendment. Those voting remotely, please vote. Will the clerk please call the names of those who have not voted yet? Baker. Uh, Baker votes aye. Baker aye. Berg. Berg votes no. Berg no. Davids. Davids votes aye. Davids aye. Fisher. Fisher votes no. Fisher no. Gomez. Gomez no. Gomez no. Grossel. Grossel aye. Grossel aye. Grunhagen. Grunhagen aye. Grunhagen aye. Hamilton. Hamilton, I. Hamilton, I. Hanson, R. Hanson, R, no. Hanson, R, no. Houseman. Houseman, no. Houseman, no. Hewitt. No. Hewitt, no. Lislagard. Lislagard, no. Lislagard, no. Mariani. Mariani, no. Mariani, no. Marquardt. Marquardt votes no. Marquardt, no. Mason. Mason, no. Mason, no. McDonald. McDonald, aye. McDonald, aye. Nash. Nash votes aye. Nash, aye. Nelson, N. Nelson, N, aye. Nelson, N, aye. Pinto. Pinto, no. Pinto, no. Pryor. Pryor, no. Pryor, no. Ryer. Pryor, no. Ryer, no. Thompson. Thompson, no. Thompson, no. Wolgamot. Wolgamot, no. The clerk will close the roll. There being 62 ayes and 70 nays, the motion does not prevail. The amendment is not adopted. There is an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Swazinski moves to amend House Bill number 164, the first engrossment. The engrossment, the, the amendment is coded A14. Representative Swazinski, to your amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, members. Um, under current law, the state 
is under the PUC's guidance is supposed to make sure that rates are 5% below the national average. And Minnesota used to have some of the lowest rates in the country. And there is a big difference between rates and utility bills. We'll hear that, you know, some people's utility bills are some of the lowest in the country, but we're talking about rates, which is different. One of the unique things that we do here in the state of Minnesota and the way our market has really developed is we use propane, we use natural gas to essentially, we don't, like Texas's problem is they heat with electricity. Other parts of our nation heat with electricity. Minnesota, a vast majority of users heat with natural gas or propane. Essentially storing electricity in a tank a few hundred yards or a few feet from your home or it comes out of a pipe from the ground. And that has really changed the dynamic of the way we do our business here in the state of Minnesota. And uh, the A14 amendment is, is really straightforward that now that we have uh, learned in committee that we are ranked 13th highest in the nation, 13th highest, ladies and gentlemen, of electricity rates in the country, uh, and we have a goal written in the law, and uh, this will just help reinforce that uh, so that we can get our rates back where they need to be uh, so that our businesses and our consumers. And, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, we talked a little bit about is the exemptions. And, you know, under current law, uh, the mines, paper mills, oil refineries are all exempt from this. And the Senate version, I believe, uh, helps reiterate that and strengthen it. I think uh, the language in this bill potentially puts those exemptions under threat. And if you believe in those jobs, in those communities, you know, I think we need to make sure that we make a strong message and, and support this amendment. Thank you very much. Discussion to the A14 amendment. Representative Stevenson. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'll ask members to oppose uh, the A14 uh, amendment. I was really encouraged to hear Representative Zuzinski uh, talk to the chamber about the difference between rates and bills, because I think that that's a very important concept when we talk about energy. Uh, rates, of course, the amount you pay per kilowatt hour, but bills are the amount of money that you actually send to the electric company. And so bills are what we should care about, because that's the money you're out when you have to pay your energy company. And while it's true that our rates have been climbing, our bills, as compared to the nation, still are below average. In fact, they're the third lowest in the Midwest. And a significant reason why is our leading energy conservation program. And let me give you one really concrete example. Members of the chamber will remember that during uh, President's Day weekend, we had a huge spike in the cost of natural gas all across uh, the country that sent rates soaring. Well, we had an emergency hearing of the uh, House and Senate uh, Energy Committee's a joint hearing shortly after that. And we posed the question to Centerpoint Energy, our state's largest gas utility, how much money did your consumers save during those four days by operation of the Conservation Improvement Program, the existing SIP program? And Centerpoint testified that it was $20 million that our residential consumers saved in just four days thanks to SIP. Conservation saves money by lowering our bills, and that's what's important. So I would ask members to vote uh, against this amendment, and I would point out again that it's opposed by the coalition. Discussion to the A14 amendment. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. please say no. Aye. No. The motion does not prevail. The amendment is not adopted. There's an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. <clears throat> Swazinski moves to amend House Bill number 164, the first engrossment. The amendment is coded A10. Representative Swazinski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, the A10 amendment um, is an awfully straightforward amendment. Uh, we heard before uh, Representative Stevenson say that it's going to be very difficult potentially for the fuel switching and that maybe we shouldn't necessarily believe the people uh, in the, the propane uh, businesses that we hear from day in and day out. I've heard a lot from my propane dealers. And they are concerned. And they feel that everyone's interpretation is different. Uh, the coalition doesn't believe that they're under threat. But Madam Speaker, we've heard over and over through the same people that are in this coalition that they want to get rid of natural gas. 
over time. They want to get rid of propane. They want to end emissions from the home when it comes to CO2 gas that are emitted by these furnaces, folks. Energy policy is a very complex puzzle. And the cornerstone or the corner piece often is the most important piece to any puzzle. And sometimes it's the first piece you find when working on one. And energy policy solutions and the rest, this bill and its expansion, whether it be the 1.5 to 2.5 mandate, whether it be the fuel switching standards, which are not done. These are new things, folks. These are pitting a monopoly within your district against a mom and pop business, potentially. And by setting the stage, by building foundation on bills like this, when it comes to energy policy, it's not the first step. I mean, folks, we could literally pass the Democrat majority's energy policy verbatim, word for word, into law. And you know what we'd hear in five years? Not enough. The world is ending and we can't stop it. We asked over and over and over, what's the impact on business? Well, sometimes we just need to do what's right, folks. And this amendment, I think, is, is really a, a poignant one because I think it's not the first bite you take of the battle, it's, a, it's the, the last bite you take of an apple that matters. You have some folks that eat it to the core, some folks that just eat the skin off, some people cut the skin off. Everyone eats an apple a different way, but I can guarantee you this is not the first bite of the apple. And if you support this bill today, you say, well, it really doesn't do what you say it's going to do, but we know where this truck is going. We know what the vision is for the proponents of this bill, and we know that they're going to eventually attempt to put these businesses out of business. And we want to make sure, with a strong vote, that we support this propane amendment. And I would ask for a roll call. Thank you. Representative Spadzinski requests a roll call. Are there 15 hands in the chamber? There are 15 hands. There will be a roll call. Discussion to the Swidzinski Amendment. Representative Stevenson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I'd ask uh, for members to oppose the A-10 Amendment. You know, I was struck by my friend Representative Swidzinski's comment that the uh, coalition wants to get rid of natural gas. That, I think, would be news to Centerpoint Energy, the state's largest natural gas uh, utility. And I think it would be news to Xcel Energy, which also sells natural gas. Uh, the truth of this is what I told you in the introduction. You don't have to take my word for it. Look at the bill itself. Look at the plain language that's in black and white that says that for a fuel switch to be authorized, it has to be cost effective and it has to re result in reduced emissions. If propane is cheaper, if propane is cleaner, there will be no fuel switch. It's that simple. It's right in the bill. So I'd ask you to oppose the amendment. Let's not pull out one section of, the, of, of energy here uh, and, and let's uh, honor what the actual bill says. Thank you. The member from Pope, Representative Anderson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, I kind of perked up when Representative Stevenson said that this uh, may in fact be good news for the propane folks because it uh, uh, may not be affected by the bill. Uh, if propane in fact uh, produces a cleaner uh, exhaust and uh, saves money, it wouldn't be affected by, by this uh, piece of legislation. So if that's the case, Representative, why don't you accept the amendment and um, exempt propane up front Propane is an extremely important uh, industry. It uh, helps agriculture in greater Minnesota. And we rely on it uh, for corn drying in the fall, but that's just a short season, a couple of weeks, maybe a month if, if the weather uh, stretches it out. But we need propane as a strong ally in industry year round and, and home heating is a big part of that. So uh, it's an important uh, facet of our life in greater Minnesota. And I strongly support the Swazinski Amendment and would urge that the propane be exempted, if in fact it would be anyway, Representative Stevenson, from your bill. So I support the Swazinski Amendment. Any further discussion to the A-10 Amendment? Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the A-10 Amendment.
Members voting remotely, please vote. Will the clerk call the names of those who have not voted yet? Baker. Baker, aye. Baker, aye. Berg. Berg, no. Berg, no. Davids. Davids, aye. Davids, aye. F Fisher. Fisher, no. Fisher, no. Gomez. Gomez, no. Gomez, no. Grossel. Grossel, aye. Grossel, aye. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, aye. Grunhagen, aye. Hamilton. Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, aye. Hanson R. Hanson R, no. Hanson R, no. Houseman. Houseman, no. Houseman, no. Hornstein. Hornstein, no. Hornstein, no. Hewitt. Hewitt, no. Lislegard. Lislegard, no. Lislegard, no. Mariani. Mariani, no. Mariani, no. Marquardt. Marquardt, no. Marquardt, no. Mason. Mason, no. Mason, no. McDonald. McDonald, yes. McDonald, I. Nash. Nash, yes. Nash, I. Nelson, N. Nelson, and I. Nelson, N. I. Pinto. Pinto, no. Pinto, no. Pryor. Pryor, no. Pryor, no. Ryer. Ryer, no. Ryer, no. Thompson. Thompson, no. Thompson, no. Walgamot. Walgamot, no. The clerk will close the roll. There being 62 ayes and 70 nays, the motion does not prevail. The amendment is not adopted. There is an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. <clears throat> Swazinski moves to amend House File Number 164, the first engrossment. The amendment is coded A9. Representative Swazinski to the A9 amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The A9 amendment. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it deals with the uh, subsidies that are given to electric car owners. And we've all heard about the impacts of utility rates on working Americans, the poorest of the poor, and how it's affected them, especially with this uh, latest cold rush that we had uh, in the state of Minnesota and across the nation. And I think it's pretty straightforward uh, that you really have to the way electric uh, vehicles work is oftentimes you can go to work, plug in, at times free, but in other words, you also have a plug-in station at home. And utility companies have been uh, essentially fuel switching by putting uh, electric car chargers in people's garages. And this would just be very simple to target this to lower income folks uh, that are trying to maybe save a, a buck or two or have someone else pay for their uh, gas to go to work and uh, to keep utilities uh, from subsidizing those installations and passing the cost on to other rate payers if they have an income over $100,000 a year. Thank you. We have an There's amendment. an amendment to the amendment. The clerk will report the amendment. <clears throat> Swazinski moves to amend his amendment to House File Number 164, the first engrossment. The amendment to the amendment is coded A-17. To the A-17 amendment to the amendment, Representative Swazinski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, members. Um, this uh, amendment really ties in really well, I think, with the overall bill uh, when it comes to the idea of fuel switching and with the idea of uh, uh, vehicles. And this would simply ban utilities' ability uh, from cost recovery if they are fuel switching vehicles. So essentially, if they are gonna be able to find savers and find capture uh, when it comes to moving people from petroleum-based vehicles to electric-based vehicles, they are not allowed to uh, 
cost, recover that, and pass the cost to other members. And uh, I would appreciate your support. Thank you, Madam. Discussion to the amendment to the amendment. Point of Member order. from Hennepin, Representative Long, for what uh, purpose do you rise? Point of order, Madam Speaker. State your point of order. Uh, Madam Speaker, the amendment to the amendment is not germane under Rule 3.21 because it introduces a new subject, which is the purchase or lease of a motor vehicle. Advice, uh, Representative Swidzinski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, advice to the members. Um, while it may introduce some new, it keeps some old. We, there is a lot of language in this bill that talks about fuel switching, whether it be fuel switching from electric heaters to gas heaters or the other way around. And this is pretty straightforward. An electric car is no different than an appliance that you'd plug in your wall. So folks, I don't believe that it actually introduces new portions. It's simply, uh, helps develop the conversation into a more meaningful one that will potentially encompass uh, the true meaning of this bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I've had the opportunity to review the amendment and the advice of Representative Long and Representative Swidzinski, and I find the point of order is well taken. On the underlying Swidzinski amendment, discussion. Representative Stevenson. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I would ask uh, members to oppose uh, the A9 amendment. I think it's uh, unworkable in the context of the current uh, SIP uh, program. It's not consistent with the way the program operates. Uh, and I also will note that it's opposed by the coalition. So I'd ask members to vote no on the A9 amendment. Discussion to the Swazinski A9 amendment. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion does not prevail. The amendment is not adopted. There are no further amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House Bill number 164. Third reading. Discussion to the bill. The member from Wright, Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I'm wondering if Representative Stevenson would yield for a question. He will yield. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Stevenson, you had mentioned that we had worked on this bill in the past and passed it off the floor, and you said that there were several changes made. And I'm wondering if you could just refresh my memory and tell me what's the difference between what we'd passed in the before and the previous biennium and the bill before us now. I, I'm just not finding a whole lot of difference and I'm wondering if you can help me out and tell me what those differences are. And I am truly undecided whether or not I'm gonna vote for your bill at this time. I've, I've spent a lot of time overlooking and looking at the Senate version of this bill and uh, I wanna hear what you have to say about this part. Representative Stevenson. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker and Representative O'Neill. Uh, the bill, when I, I maybe I misspoke, what I uh, certainly uh, meant to communicate was that over the consideration of this bill, it has seen changes. I don't uh, know of any substantive changes since the bill was last before the full body uh, uh, for a vote. Uh, and uh, uh, so I don't know if that answers your question, but we the, the bill has evolved over its lifespan, which as I noted earlier is much longer, but between our last vote on this bill, which I believe was in June, uh, or uh, no, mid-May of last year and now, uh, I don't think there's been substantial changes. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, that's more in line with that, what I remember, so I appreciate you pointing that out. Um, Representative Stevenson, I'd like to, if you would yield for one more question. He will yield, Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Stevenson, I know that Section 2 is rather complicated in the bill, um, and it is something that's been opposed by some of the advocates, and I'm wondering if you could briefly explain what Section 2 does and what the opposition has been. Representative Stevenson. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and Representative O'Neill. Section two of the bill involves innovative clean technologies, uh, and it allows uh, for our utilities uh, to try out new things. You know, I think a common theme when we talk about energy policy uh, in this chamber, and I've heard multiple members speak to this effect, is that it's hard for us to know what will be coming down uh, the pike in terms of technology. And I think I've heard Representative Garofalo in particular talk a lot about how different the energy landscape looks now versus what we thought was going to happen the last time. 
uh, we considered major energy legislation uh, on the floor of this body back in 2007. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's important uh, and why I have really uh, iterated that we needed to have a fuel neutral approach in this bill, uh, setting sort of the criteria that we want to measure and then moving forward. So innovative clean technologies section of the bill allows our utilities to have that forward looking uh, posture to find the next generation of energy technology that's going to be driving uh, this uh, industry forward. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Well, Representative Stevenson, I didn't really hear about what the concerns were or who was opposed to that. And I'm wondering if you could yield to that question and, and just let us know what some of the concerns were in section two and who had the opposition or the uh, concerns with those bills. Representative That's Stevenson. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative O'Neill, I apologize. You're correct. I, I did not uh, uh, remember to answer that part of the question. I think that the concern uh, that I've heard articulated uh, as, is as to the cost of the, of the program, and that's a consistent concern that we hear. But I would point out that I think that this bill more than pays for itself, uh, that those innovations that we see in, in, in energy uh, very often drive huge savings for consumers. So an example would be how uh, wind energy has just dramatically fallen in price and has allowed uh, for significant energy savings for Minnesota consumers over the course of the last couple decades. I look forward to similar advances in storage and other energy technologies that we're not even thinking about today and those drawing uh, uh, savings for consumers down the road. So there's, a, there's some investment on the upfront side, but I think that there's savings on the long-term side. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative Stevenson. I appreciate that. So the concern was uh, the costs involved, and I believe it was maybe the Minnesota Chamber that was opposed to it, and I believe are still opposed to those that section, um, section two. Um, I also have concerns with section two and would hope that moving forward, it, I believe you have the votes to get this off the floor, but that you would uh, work in conference committee, because I realize that this version is a bit different than the, the other body's version. Um, and my concern would be to leave that in because of those cost concerns. Um, and just to the whole of the bill, you know, this is this is something that's important for our co-ops and our municipals and utilities. It's been very, very difficult for them to comply with the SIP requirements. Now, I, I would probably just love to say, you know, get rid of the SIP requirements for them because they certainly, after all this time, have a sense as to how to accomplish those things, and those are things that are of value to them and are, are important to them, certainly is for the IOUs. I, you know, conservation is incredibly important. I don't think that we need to mandate that to them, but, you know, that's not the bill in front of us. Um, unfortunately, the bill that's in front of us is to give them a little bit more latitude, and in that, I can appreciate the bill. I do appreciate that there is additional um, things that they can include into the SIP program. And I appreciate that you put those things in, Representative Stevenson. I just would really ask that you would take our concerns on the House floor here today and move it forward into conference committee. And as you work through the final version of this bill, um, really take those into consideration. Section two seems to be fairly problematic. So we would ask that, uh, I wish we had an amendment to take that out, to be honest with you, but I no longer serve on the energy committee. So I, um, did not bring that forward. Also, uh, Representative Stevenson, we did you know, offer an amendment to you, which I'm very disappointed that you did not accept, which was reverting back that 2.5% back to 1.5% on page two, line 2.32. I think that's really important, again, when we're talking about a cost involved. I understand it's just a goal, but you know how goals turn into other things. But that uh, seems to be pretty concerning as well. Um, I'm still a little undecided what I'm going to do uh, today, if I'm going to vote for this bill or not. It's, as Representative Stevenson said, it's essentially the same bill that we had back in May or June last biennium. And um, I'm much more excited with the version in the other body. I've spent quite a bit of time looking through that. So um, Representative Stevenson, I just really hope that you would work collaboratively and um, across the aisle to move those concerns forward. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from Hennepin, Representative Long. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I rise in strong support of this bill. This is as broadly supported an energy bill as I think you're likely to find. And Representative Stevenson met, mentioned the hard work that has gone into this bill over many years of negotiation uh, between a really broad group of stakeholders. And nobody got everything they wanted. I certainly would have loved to have seen this be even stronger on energy efficiency. But I respect uh, an agreement, and I respect how hard it is to reach these agreements in areas as complicated as this. For uh, cooperative utilities and municipal utilities in particular, this bill will provide increased flexibility to meet their energy efficiency targets. And you don't have to take my word for it. The Minnesota Municipal Utilities Association and the Minnesota Rural Electric Association sent out uh, a letter to all of us that made clear, one, it does not impose new mandates. Two, this grants flexibility for meeting conservation goals. And three, this does not require anyone to change their preferred fuel choice. Yeah. There's also been some question about, well, why do we have a conservation program at all? Why is energy efficiency needed? Well, it's needed because it saves us money. It's by far the lowest cost resource that we have as a state. It's a lot cheaper to save uh, energy to not use it in the first place than to build new generation. And so why do we have goals? Well, we have goals because utilities don't have an incentive to produce less energy. Utilities want to sell more. So these goals are there for consumers to try to help uh, them use less energy on their bills. And it has succeeded in doing that. According to the Minnesota Department of Commerce, every dollar invested in the Conservation Improvement Program has generated at least $4 in benefits from energy savings. And to date, the Conservation Improvement Program has provided $6 billion in net benefits to Minnesotans. Uh, there was some talk as well about the 2.5% the goal. Uh, all of the investor-owned utilities are already meeting the requirements in this bill. They all support it and they can all meet their goals with their current energy efficiency budgets. So if we're worried about costs, you don't have to worry. The utilities can meet them with their current efficiency budgets. The concerns over fuel switching that have been stated, uh, this flexibility was requested by the cooperatives and the municipal utilities in particular to allow them some uh, options with their, with their efficiency programs. But as Representative Stevenson mentioned, any fuel switching project will be required to pass important cost effectiveness tests and also will have to demonstrate clear energy savings benefits to their customers. Finally, I just want to mention the, the jobs benefits. We're uh, at a time where we're still in an economic recovery. We, we still have a lot of folks uh, who are sitting on the bench and who need work. And projects supported by energy efficiency are inherently local. These are electrical, heating, cooling, ventilation, insulation, uh, installations. Over 45,000 local jobs, in fact, in Minnesota are supported by the Conservation Improvement Program. And that's one of the reasons I think we have such strong labor support for this program and for this bill. And efficiency projects also are shovel ready. In the last economic downturn, uh, the federal government's stimulus answer was a Recovery Act. One in eight of those federal dollars were for energy efficiency or renewable energy because investing in these projects now will save consumers money and uh, will also be stimulating our economy at a critical time. So I ask members to support this really broadly supported bill. Thank you. The member from Fillmore, Representative Davids. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And members, I'd first of all like to thank Rep Representative Swazinski uh, for some very uh, well thought out amendments. I am disappointed that the uh, propane amendment did not go on. Um, I know there's some strong support out there for this bill. I'm kind of uh, weak support for this bill. I'm going to vote for it, uh, get it to conference, and hopefully some of these things will be taken care of because. There's some very important groups in the state that do oppose this bill, uh, and I think we need to bring them to the table and see what can be worked out. So uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Stevenson. Uh, and I hope that in conference committee, uh, some things can be worked out on this to make this a better bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from St. Louis, Representative Liss Lagarde. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Um, I rise in total support of this bill. Is it perfect? No, it is not. But um, for the, the author of the bill to work across the aisle, work collectively with uh, all the different stakeholders to come to the best option that we have before us, um, I can't say enough, right? There's no, no such thing as a perfect bill. Perf perfection is subjective. But what's before us is something that moves us forward, and the leadership that uh, Chair Stevens has showed is uh, something that uh, I totally respect, and I thank him for all the work working across the aisle with all the different 
stakeholders to get to where we're at today, and I fully support it. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from Lyon, Representative Swazinski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, members. Um, it's obviously an honor to serve in this room. We don't get back in here near enough. But, uh, you know, this amendment and this bill uh, that's before us um, has been talked about over and over and over have broad support. Well, folks, it doesn't. It has support in areas. But when you talk to the business owners in your districts, over the last 15 years, commercial rates are up 20 times the national average. Residential rates are, I think, uh, 2.5 times. Electrical policy matters. I often think what we did, Representative Eklund, I believe, carried this bill, the cooperative side and the municipal side last year. I think it had broad bipartisan support. A lot of folks looked at this and said, you know what, this makes a little bit of sense. Whenever we can give a little bit of ease to cooperatives, ease to the municipalities when it comes to energy policy in our state, it's a good thing. Did it pass individually? No. It got stuck with increased mandates, increased goals, new programs that cost millions upon millions of dollars. And sadly, it reminds me of another policy where the House DFL majority took something with broad bipartisan support. The PEPP federal tax initiatives, the unemployment on the $600 a week that people received, and stuck it with an exceptionally controversial bill that not everyone supports. Well, I think everyone in this room would probably vote for the co-op and municipal portion of the bill. Obviously, we probably want to tweak parts of it. But you'd have an opportunity to have a win. This legislature, this Minnesota House, is lacking when it comes to wins. Putting bills to the floor for passage, putting bills that make a difference for Minnesotans. We have an opportunity to pass real tax reform, put businesses that are hurting because of COVID, and instead we're putting controversial electrical policy before the legislature that's going to increase rates that they don't agree with. I've often argued with the cooperatives. I said, why are you coming to the legislature and asking for a tweak? We passed here just a couple of years ago co the cooperative empowerment, where we actually recognize locally affected, elected officials that are local co-ops, electrical co-ops, as people with power. This bill doesn't do that. There are some cooperatives that would like to do 3.5%. And I believe they should be able to vote to do that. I believe there are co-ops that don't think they should have to do any of it. And I think those locally elected officials should be able to do that. This bill doesn't do that. It's kind of like the old adage, that little kid that would play in the park and say the only reason why the dog plays with him because there's a pork chop around it is because of what you did with the rest of the bill by increasing mandates, increasing costs on utilities that businesses don't want, businesses don't need. Businesses need the opportunity to thrive. They need the tax bills we've talked about to be passed. Unemployment, unemployed people who are doing their taxes right now need that to be passed. The last thing we should be doing is ignoring business, ignoring coalitions of businesses that have real concern about their ability to compete, not only just in a tax environment, but also in an energy environment. I mean, the basis of this bill has an understanding that if you use a lot of electricity, you should probably be exempt from this because it's going to cost you a lot. This bill doesn't exempt agriculture. I would maybe reach out to those conferees that are going to be on the committee to add agricultural production food production, 
Energy is a necessity. We don't want to go back to outhouses. We don't want to go back to walking. But we do need opportunity to do things cheaply and effectively. Our rates are up. While we say it's cheap, it's cheap relatively to everything else going up. And I would just ask this legislature to pause, to think, to listen. Representative O'Neill made a great point, one that I wish I had made first, but she could beat me to it. The last time this bill hit the floor, what's changed? We heard we, that we, we heard that we heard from a lot of people that had concerns. But nothing changed. Very little. Maybe a couple of periods and probably some effective dates is about the only thing that have changed since the last time this bill hits the floor. That's not necessarily the way we could do things. We can do it better. So I'd make a, a plea to those folks across the aisle and to my own that this bill is not headed to the governor's desk. It's going to a conference committee. And I would personally argue that the other side has made some improvements and they can do more. But I would ask for a no vote today on this bill because it can only improve. And I know oftentimes we say something to our friends and neighbors back home and say, yep, I'll support that bill. This is not the bill as it stands alone. It's the pork chop. Thank you. The member from Wabasha, Representative Dreskowski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, members. Thank you, Representative Stevenson, for bringing the bill. Um, the bill is reminiscent for me, Madam Speaker, of a bill that you had here nearly 10 years ago. And I remember discussing, Madam Speaker, you may be, uh, you may be grinning underneath that mask you have on this, this afternoon, but uh, I asked you about a uh, solar garden bill that you had. I had never heard of solar gardens before and I asked what you raised in solar gardens and because I was aware of other things that were raised in solar gardens and uh, you couldn't come up with what was raised in solar gardens and my response was uh, then uh, Representative Hortman, uh, they raise rates in solar gardens, Representative, they raise rates. And Madam Speaker, uh, Representative Stevenson and members, that's what happened. Our rates and Representative Stevenson, our bills, our electric bills have skyrocketed since uh, directly related to that bill and the in, in the uh, introduction of the liberal ideology into the energy pricing uh, structure here in Minnesota. And Representative Stevenson, you left out the most important constituency group, the most and the biggest constituency group, and that's the people of Minnesota. You talked about the support uh, that all of the uh, campaign contribution wielding uh, big energy companies and unions and others uh, who are in front of you daily uh, were pacified by the language you brought forward. Uh, but you brought it forward all at the time while you are uh, bringing uh, with this policy like, represent, like Speaker Hortman did back nearly 10 years ago, policy that is going to jack up the rates and Representative Stevenson, the bill, the energy bill of the people of Minnesota, the consumers, the people, Representative Stevenson, who vote for you. The utility doesn't vote for you, Representative Stevenson, and neither do the unions. But they're the most active at the Capitol, the ones with your phone number on speed dial, and the ones in front of you most. The ones we forget here the most in the Minnesota House of Representatives are the ones who sent us here. And you're prepared with this bill to jack up their rates and their bills. You should take this bill, withdraw it, and send it back where it came from. Madam Speaker, members, please vote no on this bill. Let's save uh, our constituents from yet another um, uh, jacking up of their rates and their energy bills. It's going to make it even more expensive and harder for them to live in this state uh, that we Representative Stevenson. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And, uh, you know, I think it is important to think about what the people of Minnesota want. And I think what those people, what they want 
is energy conservation. They want to save money. We know that because the programs that SIP operates are incredibly popular. They are used by people all across the state of Minnesota. They're not mandatory that consumers participate in these programs. No one's going to force you to get a home energy audit. No one's going to force you to get a rebate for your, uh, your new insulation or your more efficient uh, water heater. But Minnesotans choose to participate in SIP every day in large numbers. And that's why I'm able to tell the body that it has generated $6 billion in benefits, why it supports 45,000 jobs. The people of Minnesota value energy conservation and they demonstrate with their actions and they'll do it again if given the opportunity under this expanded and modernized program. The coalition that supports this is broad, but I also hear from constituents that tell me they want us to do something on energy. I also wanted to speak to Representative Swazinski's point about commercial rates, and I want to tell the chamber that it's not just residential consumers. I told you before the example during the polar vortex, residential consumers saved $20 million just in their gas bills because of SIP. Well, commercial industrial uh, uh, consumers saved $5 million during that same time just from Centerpoint. Everyone benefits from energy conservation. It's one reason why businesses across the state support this bill. You know, uh, I was happy to hear from my friend, Representative Lislegar, because it reminded me of a saying that he says a lot that I kind of like. Uh, he says, uh, don't trip over a dollar to pick up a dime. And when you think about this bill, think about that. Are there some costs in this bill? Yeah, but the savings, the benefits to consumers are so much greater. You got to look at the whole picture when making your decision. Don't trip over a dollar to pick up a dime. I'd like to remind my friends across the aisle that co-ops and munis want this bill. This is the bill they want, not a different bill. They have said so in communications to you uh, repeatedly this year and last year, that this is the bill that they would like you to pass. And last, because I know there's at least one undecided voter in this room, or maybe not in the room, but uh, appearing here, I, I do want to reiterate to the body that just as I have on this bill all the way through, just as I have on every bill that I work with, I am committed to working collaboratively and reaching across the aisle. That's the way that I operate on all of the bills I touch. It's the way I've operated on this bill, and it's the way I'll continue to operate as we go forward. So I'm asking for the Chamber's support uh, today. I'd ask for a green vote, and thank you. The clerk will take the roll on the bill. Members voting remotely, please vote. Will the clerk call the names of those who have not voted yet? Baker. Baker votes aye. Baker aye. Berg. Berg aye. Berg aye. Davids. Davids votes aye. Davids aye. Fisher. Fisher aye. Fisher aye. Gomez. Gomez aye. Gomez aye. Grassel. Grassel no. Grassel no. Grunhagen. Grunhagen no. Grunhagen no. Hamilton. Hamilton I. Hamilton I. Hanson R. Hanson R. I. Hanson R. I. Houseman. Houseman I. Houseman I. Heinrich. Heinrich no. Heinrich no. Hewitt. Hewitt I. Listlegard. Listlegard I. Listlegard I. Mariani. Mariani I. Mariani I. Marquardt. Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Mason. 
Mason I. Mason I. McDonald. McDonald, nay. McDonald, no. Nash. Nash, no. Nash, no. Nelson N. Nelson N, no. Nelson N, no. Pinto. Pinto, I. Pinto, I. Pryor. Pryor, I. Pryor, I. Ryer. Pryor, I. Ryer, I. Thompson. Thompson, I. Thompson, I. Wolgamot. Wolgamot, I. The clerk will close the roll. There being 82 ayes and 50 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to.